Hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm doing good. 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 Good, good to see you again. Good to see you. Man, since we were here at this, this construction site, all kinds of things have been happening. Uh, we've done a lot of interior uh, walls where they attach to the yeah. exterior. Uh, we've looked at uh, ways to control our uh, vapor, our moisture vapor in the building. We're thinking about how we're going to insulate here in probably a couple more weeks, and hopefully in the next couple days we'll have this part of the house shingled. Well, as I just came in, uh, you were working with uh, one of these. Right, I'm wondering, right. uh, what is this? Okay, well, this is, uh, this is a bench chute. There's a lot of different uh, styles, but this is the one that uh, sells the most around here. What we have to do is we have to, uh, by code, uh, uh, get some uh, attic ventilation from the soft at the overhang all right. the way to the peak. And uh, when we have a vaulted ceiling like this, sometimes it's, it's a little tough. Okay. So what okay. we have to do is we have to put a uh, vent chute up between the rafters. We go every other bay, not in mm -hmm. every bay, but every other bay. And then so that the, the bottom edge sticks out past the exterior of the wall. And then this will go all the way up to, well, uh, about where there's two feet of uh, insulation in the attic and then it'll stop. So okay. we have to have ventilation go all the way through. Now, what's the advantage of the homeowner? I mean, why would they even care that you're doing this? Well, you have to because of the building code, but uh, it's, it's supposed to be able to keep your attic a little bit cooler in the summer and, and you don't have any damage with your uh, shingles. Uh, you know, from overheating. Are there any other touchstone energy efficient features here? Uh, yeah, the, the you know, the, the thing about this is, you know, we've got these uh, trusses that have a, a nine inch raised heel. You can, you can see on the truss that, you know, the sheeting, the roof sheeting is, is nine inches away from the top of the exactly, wall. You know, yeah. We've got to have enough insulation there to keep that whole area warm. Okay. And so what we've done is we've ordered an energy truss or a raised heel truss. Mm -hmm. It comes up nine inches. And then what we'll do is we'll have insulation go all the way to the top of the wall and we'll take like scraps of foam or OSB mm -hmm. and uh, what these will do is they'll slip in underneath the vent chute nailed to the outside plate okay. and then that keeps the insulation from falling into the overhang. Yeah, that's good, right? That, yeah, the last thing you want to do is take fiberglass and just roll it up in there because it'll eventually fall out. So that keeps it warm in, in that part of the structure where there's very little air movement in a house. So it'll keep that part of the house okay. warm. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, sounds like a great plan there. Let's look at the next feature, okay? Okay. All right. This isn't your standard corner. Uh, right, right here is, uh, is one of the biggest energy losers in a standard home, yeah. is they'll have all these studs stacked in here. You know, this oh, is yeah. the way we all learned how to build, is either put three studs and then four. You've got all this lumber and no insulation. And uh, half the time when you did put it together, you'd throw some fiberglass in on a day like today, and oh, sure, yeah. it's not raining, yeah. but sooner or later it's going to and it would get wet. Or the worst case is when the electrician's drilling through there and he wraps all the insulation up on his bit. So we've eliminated all that, and you really don't need to hold that much. All you're doing is holding this stud in place. Right. It's held at the bottom, it's held at the top already on the plates. So all you need to do is keep it from wobbling and just take a, some scraps of 22 and a half inch, in this case, uh, two by six, two by fours, yeah. and just nail it right here. Have you wrapped it in plastic though, why? Right, well, there's gonna be a consistent vapor barrier, vapor retarder in the house, and yeah. if we were to not wrap the stud as we put it up, we'd be coming along over to here and stop, and then have to try to cobble it up and go around. So you just wrap the studs. And nice and simple now. Nice works. and okay. simple, all right, right. All right. right. Well, we're getting ready to put some sheetrock up here, so now how are we going to hang the sheetrock? Okay, well, everybody asks that question, especially on a unit like this, is we stick this corner bead in. All this is is drywall corner bead, just standard. You can buy it in any okay. lumber yard. And what you do is you nail it onto the stud about every foot. Right. And then this piece of sheetrock comes in first, and then this one comes over and pins it in. And then you attach the sheetrock to this stud. Now, the big advantage to this even if you weren't thinking of energy, yeah. there's only one piece of wood drying. Less cost? Less cost, you don't have all this wood here. And if there's one piece of wood drying, you don't have the drywall cracks. So this is why Touchstone Energy Efficient Homes have corners like this. Right, right. This is how the interior no cracking, partitions. Uh, less wood cost. Right. And bottom line in terms of efficiency. It, you've got all this consistent ventilation behind and you, the, from the outside, if you take an infrared test, you can't even tell where your inside walls are at. Excellent, excellent. Now you said Touchstone Energy Homes have something special with regard to attic space. Let's right. go ahead and uh, take a look and see what that means, okay? Okay. All right. Well, Bill, we're, uh, we're standing here really in a vaulted ceiling and this looks like the attic to the house. Right. Uh, again, what's going to make this a Touchstone Energy Home? Okay, well, 
as you can see, this is this is the attic, and normally uh, you wouldn't be able to see this at this height since we're up in this uh, above the hallway. But we're going to eventually blow about two feet of cellulose up in this okay. attic. We blow it two feet, which seems like a lot. But yeah. If, you know, it, when it's blown, it has a lot of air in it. So what it'll do is it'll settle. So we want to make sure that we have a good uh, amount of insulation in this attic. Is that a touchstone energy standard? That's a touchstone feet? energy okay. standard. Right. Well, you know, it, it depends on what part of touchstone energy you're actually in as the R values do change. You know, here in, okay. say, in the Fort Dodge area, uh, we have a standard and southern part of Iowa is different, northern part. It just oh, depends. So it's climatically changing and, okay. Right, a touchstone can give you all of those, you know, R values that you need for your specific area. The, the, the neat thing about this particular part of the house, though, is we see a lot of problems in houses uh, when you have this transition from a vault to this uh, this wall section. That's right here, yeah. And you know, a lot of people can say, yeah, I know what you're talking about because I'll see a crack along here and there. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, okay, we go ahead and fill this with insulation, and then we fill this up here with insulation. Right, right. So we've got two feet up here, and then that comes over to here. Well, what about this little magic triangle okay. right that, there? That's where the problem's going to be? That's where the problem's at. You can uh, go into quite a few houses, be in the attic, look, and you'll see bare drywall. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to be able to take and treat this exactly like an exterior wall. Put this 2 by 6 we'll frame these all the way up, mm -hmm. and then we'll put foam on the back side and treat it just like an exterior wall. So we'll have our 1 inch foam in the exterior, we'll put our 6 inches of insulation in here, our vapor retarder, our drywall, and then we're not going to have a problem with any kind of uh, moisture or ghosting or any thermal problems here, it just, it just takes care of everything. This looks like Christmas wrapping to me. Right, it's, it, it's pretty, isn't it? It's wrapped nice and tight. Uh, this is a Tyvek house wrap. Mm -hmm. um, the same thing as home wrap. It's the exact same thing. They've just changed the names in the last few years. Some people get kind of confused on the okay. terminology. Uh, what this does is it, it keeps moisture vapor uh, to be able to, if it's trapped inside the wall, it can travel back and forth, mm -hmm. but also it stops air, okay? Because an air molecule is larger than a wa sure. water vapor. And so the vapor can travel back and forth so it's not trapped inside the wall and again getting your insulation wet. This is a perfect drainage plane because our, our problem with the houses that we have today is no matter whether it's vinyl, wood, cedar, brick, doesn't matter. doesn't matter, water gets through it and it has to be able to uh, get behind the siding and travel away. So you don't want it in the wall, it hits this and goes right down. Now, uh, where are we standing in relationship to the house? I mean, this is uh, looks like it's been framed out in some way. Right. Well, what we've got right here is uh, the garage area, and we've put in all this uh, rock for drainage and support. We're going to have two inches of foam on top of that, but we're also doing a, okay. uh, a frost-free foundation system. And the key to a frost-free foundation is we don't have to do near as much excavation. We can go down 18 inches, 24 inches. And then we go out horizontally with four inches, okay. or two inches thick foam, about four feet. And that way the frost can't uh, get all the way back. The frost doesn't know which way it's going. You know, we go four <laughs> feet in the ground. So if we go out, you know, and it's, it's nothing new. It just became code just a couple years ago. But the Europeans and Canadians have been using them for decades. And, and finally the physics caught up in the United States and it's finally being allowed. And it's a, it's a beautiful way to do a, a foundation system without a whole lot of excavation. Mm -hmm.